When the bifold leaves a factory, everything's preset in the factory, so if you go onto site and nothing's moved, everything should slide perfectly. What we've done here is we've made some adjustments to the bifold so things are out of alignment. And what I've done today is brought uh, Nigel along with me. Nigel's from Brio. He's the hardware specialist, so what he'll do is show us how to make the adjustments to the hardware. Areas that can cause issues with your bifold system are your lintel. If your lintel is installed incorrectly and sags over time, this reduces your clearances, which then makes the door bind or rub on the sill. If the lintel sags too far, there's just not enough clearance space to make adjustments to get that do clear. Other issues, if the sill is not installed in correctly and starts to lift and bow, it will also cause the bottom guides to rub or bind. So if we just start by kicking out our stop and operating our door, we're finding that it's actually grabbing on the sill so the bottom guide is actually biting into the sill, creating issues. Down the track that'll only get worse. Just as we're uh, closing up the flush bolts as normal, occasionally they might be a little bit tight until the seals actually settle in. We have our top and bottom flush bolt. Just upon closing the door, we can actually notice if we get the close in at the moment that our doors don't line up and our gap that runs down the door fluctuates from top to bottom. Just to show you what the gaps are like, we'll start with a piece of 4mm ply because we know it's a fairly consistent um, spacings. At the top, we can't get the 4mm ply to actually go in between the rebate of the two doors. But as we slide down, at about a third of the way down, we start to get a 4mm gap, which is nice. But by the time we get it down to the bottom of the door, we're looking at quite a bit of slop. So that's at 4mm. So we need to get that gap consistent all the way across. This top gap here should be 7mm. We're using a 7mm piece of ply just as our spacer. You can use a ruler. We can look at this point that the gap from, if you can actually see it into the uh, camera point here, is actually a little lip on the extrusion. From the bottom of that lip to the top of the door should be 7mm. And this one's very, very tight. It's probably getting around the 5mm sort of stage. As we come along, that gap decreases as well. As we continue along, we then open up to quite a bit of gap, so seven or eight mil, and then that continues all the way along to the outer edge. Again, we'll go back to our four mil piece of ply. We're probably at a little bit over the four mil, probably five or six mil, and as we run down, we get tied into the jam down at the bottom. So what's the first thing we need to do here, Nigel, to start straightening things up? Well, the first thing we need to do is get our top gap correct, so our levels are perfect all the way across, and they should match with our, uh, our active leaf at the other end. From there, once we've got that, then we can look at actually getting the door to be closing up on the gap at the other end. So the first thing we need to sort of start with is looking at getting our heights correct here. Every Brio kit is actually supplied with its own uh, Allen key that comes with every kit just for today's exercises so that we can actually uh, show the adjustment a little bit easier, we're going to use a little bit of a specialised tool. It's just loosening off our bottom pivot point. To do this, all we do is just loosen off the two outside Allen keys slightly. It actually allows us to move that uh, pivot door backwards and forwards. With the, um, the new uh, upgraded hardware that we have with um, Brio nowadays, the adjustment is actually this little push button Allen key point in here. All you have to do is push that up so it disengages the locking mechanism and then we can actually make some adjustments in our screw height. This is our uh, second adjustment point. This is what we call an intermediate hanger. So this adjusts in the same manner. We push the button up. So now we're moving along to the second hanger and depending on how many doors you have, you just keep moving your way along and making the adjustments as you go. You may also have our previous model. First we're going to do is actually remove the locking collar from the, from the hardware just by using a Phillips screwdriver, being careful not to drop the screw. Once you've removed your collar, you can then use your Allen key that came with the kit, make your adjustments. Once you've made your adjustments, replace your locking collar. From here now we need to check to make sure all our doors actually all our doors slide properly. To do this, we just reverse the process. And 
and you'll notice that there's no binding or no grabbing of the bottom of the door onto the sill. Now we need to relock off our pivot point to make sure that it's nice and tight and we don't have any change of adjustment. Ensure the two outside Allen keys are nice and tight and that the last door doesn't move at all. From here, now we make sure the door slides as it did before without any binding. Now that everything's all been adjusted, we need to, just need to do a final check of all our gaps to make sure we have a perfect consistent gap all the way between the rebate of the two doors that our gap is consistent all the way along and that our gap is consistent down our jam. With all those correct, you have a perfectly working bifold door from Woodworkers.